Hey guys, my name's Jen and I'm so excited that you've chosen to join us online today. I believe you will be encouraged today as a result. If this is your first time joining us, I'd like to give a special shout out to you. If you would, text the word FIRST to the number on the screen. We'd love to send you a gift card for a coffee on us. Thanks again for joining us today. Excited for what God has in store. Let's dive in. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris Heifel. I'm lead pastor here at Grace River Church and I want to say thank you so much for watching online at home today. Today we are in week six of a sermon series that we're calling Battle Ready, and we're just talking about how you can face the battles in life uh, and how to do that, how to approach that based out of the book of Ephesians. And so uh, God gives us a playbook on how we can be battle ready, uh, and today I want to talk to you about how you can be decisive. Uh, man, there are so many decisions that you and I have to make every single day, every single week, and I don't know, man, but I, I really believe that there are some people listening today that may find themselves in a crossroads of a major decision and my hope and my prayer for you uh, is that you're able to take a next courageous step in finding and following Jesus and knowing His will as a result of this teaching today. And so uh, we're going to talk about the fact that you are decisive today. And you're decisive not because of what you've done, but because of what God's done for you by providing Jesus to be your Savior. And so uh, we, we all face some battles. We've been talking about these battles. Maybe you have a battle at work uh, that you're facing, a dilemma there. Maybe you've got a health battle. Maybe you've got kids or grandkids that you just love to see live for God. Maybe they're not, uh, and you're battling them. Uh, maybe it's uncertainty. There's just some things that are really up in the air for you concerning your future, and you're trying to figure it out. Maybe it's loneliness that you're battling, you know. Uh, and what's interesting about loneliness is you can be surrounded by people and still feel extremely alone. Maybe that's what you're battling today. Maybe it's fear. Uh, maybe it's anxiety. Maybe it's some level of insecurity. Like, we all have battles that we're facing and today, we're going to talk really about how you can be decisive in those battles. And so uh, the Apostle Paul, who wrote over half the New Testament, wrote this in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 17. He says, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools. So the warning here is, is you got to be careful. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you've got to be careful, be gentle, be subtle, be careful. Uh, don't live like a fool, but like those who are wise. This is pretty simple advice. Don't act like a fool. Act like a wise person. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. And so uh, you, we may think that today we're living in evil days, but Paul wrote this over 2,000 years ago. And so uh, the days were evil then, just like they're, the days were evil then, just like they are now. And so the struggle is, is that we would make the most of every single opportunity, that every day that we have, every breath that we take uh, is a gift from God, and let's make the most of every opportunity. Don't act thoughtlessly. And so when we, when we act, when we, when we make decisions, do it with some thought. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. So my question to you today is this, is do you want to do what God wants you to do? And the encouragement from Paul is that you and I would understand what the Lord wants you to do. Do you know what it is that God wants you to do? I know that uh, sometimes when I'm making decisions, it, I feel like every week there are decisions that I have to make. Decisions here at the church, decisions with my family, uh, decisions with our finances, all kinds of decisions that have to be made. What I'm going to wear, right? Uh, and so these are all the things that we got to figure out throughout the course of a day. I don't know uh, if you were a product of the 80s or the 90s like I was, but uh, they, they used to have this thing called the magic eight ball. And when you didn't know how to make a decision, you would just turn to one of these. And there were some people that thought these things were satanic and on the edge of Ouija boards and stuff like that. And maybe, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, uh, you could turn to the Magic 8 Ball and figure out, like, you know, are the Chiefs going to win this weekend? And then you would find out that the outlook isn't so good. That's, that's not good, right? Uh, maybe you're trying to figure out uh, what you're wanting to eat for lunch or dinner, and you turn to the Magic 8 Ball, and, and it says, can't predict that right now. Well, that's not super useful, right? Or maybe you turn to the Magic 8-Ball uh, and you're trying to figure out uh, if you should you know, hang out with a group of friends tonight and it says this, it's, it's not certain, right? These are all vague answers, right? But we used to turn to this dumb thing uh, for answers, but the reality is, is that God has answers for our lives and God's will isn't that difficult to figure out and understand. In fact, we know that it's right here in the Bible and so we don't need a Magic 8-Ball to figure this out. Uh, we'll destroy this later, I guess, but uh, this is not something that we're actually going to use to help make wise choices or decisions. But in Romans chapter 1, uh, there's, this, there's this warning about making bad decisions. Look at this. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious behavior, and gossip. They're backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud, boastful. They invent, 
new ways of sinning. I mean, does that sound like culture today or what, right? Uh, does that sound like friends that we may have or what? Like people that are inventing ways of sinning and they disobey their parents, they refuse to understand, they break their promises, they're heartless and they have no mercy. And so Paul says, don't act like this. In fact, turning back to verse 17, don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. And I wonder today, do you have an understanding of what God wants you to do? Like maybe you're at that crossroads where you're trying to figure out, like, okay, um, I'm trying to figure out, should I quit my job and fulfill the dream that God's put in my heart? Maybe you're trying to figure out how to sort something out in your marriage. Maybe you're trying to figure out um, something, a difficult situation with your kids. Uh, you know, we all have things we're trying to sort through. But what if we sorted through it not based off of what we wanted to do, what emotion would tell us to do, what our circumstances would tell us what to do, what culture would tell us what to do, and instead we looked at God and said, God, what do you want? What is your will? And so I want to talk to you today really specifically about next steps, about how is it that you and I can know what God's will is? Like, how can we know? How can we know what God's will is? And so uh, I'm going to give you just some hope today. Often, the answer to God's will is, is not an immediate answer. So we, we can pray, we can seek God's face, we can seek godly counsel in our lives. And what's really difficult about figuring out God's will is it doesn't happen immediately. We love instant gratification, right? In fact, that's why uh, the number one selling thing with popcorn right now is pre-pop popcorn. There was a day when a microwave popcorn was like the, the, the hot selling item at the grocery store. Well, now People don't even want to wait two and a half minutes to pop popcorn in their microwave because they want the instant bag of popcorn. And that's the way we work. We want instant gratification. We want an answer from God, and we want it right now. And when we don't get it, we don't know how to react. And so I would tell you this, man. When it comes to figuring out God's will, I would tell you, let's be patient. Uh, you may not get an immediate answer. And every once in a while you may, but more than likely 99% of the time, it's a waiting game on God. It's trying to figure out what it is that God wants us to do. And I think it's important to set your expectations that it's not going to happen immediately, that it's going to happen, uh, but it's not going to be an immediate answer. And so when it comes to sorting out what God's will is, just know you got to put on some patience for this, okay? Also, understand that God's will is broader than we may originally think. So sometimes we think that God's will is this very specific thing, and it's like following a cloud around, right? And what I want you to know is that God's will is broader than we may think it is. In fact, in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus summarizes God's will by saying this, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Now you notice this, the most important thing that I would do is that I would seek the kingdom of God. Because when I seek out his kingdom above all else, so ab above money, above fame, above friendships, above prestige, I'm seeking the kingdom of God above everything else, and I live righteously, like right living, and he will give you everything you need. So the secret to knowing God's will is to seek him. That's the secret. It's not that difficult, but it's really a complex thing if you break it down, because Everything in our hearts wants to seek something else besides him. But the secret to finding his will means that I don't live for myself, I live for him. So when I seek him above all else and I live righteously, all of a sudden I get everything that I need. I get the answers that I need when I live for him. And so, um, man, there are, there are really four wills of God. I want to break down these four wills. The first one is this, is that everyone... Uh, that everyone would know Jesus. That's the will of God, that every single person would know Jesus. And I know there are different theological stances on this, uh, but God's position is that every single knee would bow, that every tongue would confess Jesus Christ is Lord of, of, of our lives. And so um, look at this in John chapter 6, verse 40. Jesus says, For it's my Father's will that all would see his Son and believe in him and should have eternal life. I will raise them up at the last day. So Jesus himself says, man, it's the Father's will. It's God's will that everyone would meet, know, and follow him. This weekend is baptism weekend at Grace River Church, and I love watching people's lives be cha radically changed by the gospel. Uh, in fact, I want you to check out this story. It's so encouraging uh, because it just reminds us that, man, the, the hope is that every single knee would bow, that every single tongue would confess Jesus Christ as Lord. Check out this video. 
Hello, my name is Alex Misi, and this is my story. Basically, I've been attending Grace River, I think since about 2019, off and on here and there. Uh, my wife got baptized a year and a half ago, actually, and she is one of the main reasons to where, I, to where I've gotten to this point. Um, she always encouraged me to come to every Sunday with her, but never forced me to go, knowing that um, my faith really wasn't a priority to me. She just encouraged me to one day, hopefully make it a priority. My life before Jesus was, I was, my grandma passed away um, in 2019. And that's kind of when I just stopped believing in Jesus, God, everything. Uh, my life, I was always kind of like a happy-go-lucky person. And my life got kind of dark and I just didn't know how to handle it. So I dealt with it on my own. Um, and then come 2020, uh, we had our daughter Collins which was supposed to be a very happy time in her life, but still I just couldn't find my way out of this hole. And finally I got to the point where um, the only option I thought was possible was suicide. Uh, I, that's all I could think about was if, if you just do this, then you can, you can just end it all and you won't suffer anymore. And you won't be, nobody else around you will have to deal with you being in a depressed state constantly. That fast forward, I started coming to church um, with Kayla more regularly. Uh, I was more than just a Christmas and Easter goer because uh, every sermon felt like it was touching like me personally. Every time Pastor Chris would say something like, I'm like, oh, like that can apply it to my life. And finally I started applying like what I was learning in church, like to my everyday life, making it a point to use it and realize that like there's more of a purpose to this life than the way I thought it was gonna be, like the way I thought it was supposed to end. Um, and then one day I was actually driving and every time I drive a long distance, I just look up and talk to my grandma and grandpa because obviously they've both passed away and it's the only form of communication I have with them. Um, and that day, it, the becoming God aware, like that was the day for me as like realizing that talking to them, looking up and just letting go of all the worries and things that I had, um, it just, it felt like something like lifted off my chest finally. And I was, I was, I could breathe easy and I could feel the happiness come, starting to come back in my life and start enjoying time with my wife, my daughter, and the things that are supposed to bring me happiness rather than focus on the sadness. So when I decided to uh, give my life to Jesus was actually on October the 6th, it was about a week ago. Um, so I did it in my bedroom, oddly enough, because I would lay there every night with the dark thoughts of ending my life, even though I was laying next to my wife and my, and my kid, like the happiest things in my life. That's where I thought I needed to go back to and kind of tie it full circle and just realize that like it started there and then finally saying my prayers every night once I found this new life and it, it's ending there, the thoughts were that they're no more and that this is where everything was supposed to, I, I guess, come full circle. My life after Jesus uh, obviously is a lot better. Uh, the happiness, the joy, everything is back into my life that I used to have before my grandma and grandpa passed away. Um, I give my wife happiness uh, that she deserves from me. Uh, my daughter gets my full attention rather than me just dwelling on the sadness of my life and the things that I couldn't even control and thought it, I could control them. I would like to thank once again my wife uh, for just always encouraging me to go to church with her. Never, never ever like forcing me to go. Like it was always, hey, do you want to go with me this morning? I think you should come with me, but if you don't want to understand. Um, also, my youth pastor from high school plays a crucial role in this too, because he's actually the one that introduced me to religion whenever I was just a freshman in high school. He just asked me simply one night if I wanted to go to his youth group with him after baseball practice, and I went, and then that's where it all began and kind of everything started for me in this journey. And then, Finally, uh, Sarah Gilbert, because uh, which is my wife's cousin, um, I just want to give her a shout out because she always just asked for me to give her three straight Sundays of going to church. And then if I didn't like that, I'd have to come back, obviously. But uh, I mean, here we are. So I'd like to thank my wife, uh, my youth pastor, Coach Lay, as well as Sarah. I'm excited today to take the next step in my faith toward baptism. Man, I love that story. And it just helps us to understand Every single person, uh, God is crazy about them. And the will of God is that every person would come, would come to know him. And so that's the first will of God, that everyone would know Jesus. The second one is that, is that everyone would give thanks. Uh, that's another of the four wills of God, that people would know Jesus, that everyone would give thanks. No matter what your circumstance is, no matter what your difficulty is, no matter what your battle is, that we would all be looking for ways to say thank you back to God. Look at this. Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, Be thankful 
in all circumstances, for this is God's will for, for you who belong to Christ Jesus. And so, man, it's be thankful. And I look this, this phrase up, in all circumstances, you know what it means? It means in all circumstances. It means in everything that we're up against, that we're finding ways to be thankful. And that's more than just like a, a glass half full kind of person. It's honestly looking at every circumstance that we find ourselves in and saying, and finding a way that we can simply say, God, thank you for this mess. God, thank you for this trial, because I know this battle, this difficulty that I'm in is actually drawing me closer to you and raising my dependency level up on you. And so that's the second thing is that everyone would give thanks. The third one is that everyone would do what is right, that we would, uh, that we would submit uh, and do what is right, that, that God would, would put it on our hearts and do the right thing. And so um, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 15 says, it's God's will that you would be on that that, you, that your lives would be honorable and you should silence those ignorant people who make foolish accusations against you. And so it's God's will that you would live an honorable life, uh, that you would live a righteous life, and so that you would live by right living. And don't mistake this for religious living. So some of you may have grown up uh, in a religious home where there was like rules to follow, and the number one thing would be that you would just follow rules. This isn't a loving God out of duty. This is loving God and saying, God, I want to live a right life not for rule's sake, uh, but for right living's sake, for righteousness sake, because I want to be more like you. And so, uh, and that's the third thing is that you and I would do, would choose to do what is right. And the fourth thing is that we'd abstain from sexual sin. Uh, this is God's will that you and I would abstain from sexual sin. First uh, Thessalonians 4.13, God's will is for you to be holy, so stay away from sexual sin. And so, I mean, I want to give a warning to you today and to help you understand that you may think that when it comes to sexual sin that it's only hurting you, uh, that it's not hurting anyone else. And here's what I want you to know, man. It's, it's, it's hurting people. Uh, and it's going to jack up your relationships. It's going gonna, it's gonna to decrease uh, vulnerability around others. You do, like, I promise you, man, abstain from sexual sin. Make a decision to say, I'm going to follow this will of God. Uh, and don't just let this be a box that you check, but let this be a life that you live by. And so make sure that you're taking those steps and so when it comes to next steps, I think this is important. I like to wrap up every sermon uh, helping you think of next steps that you can take on your journey. And really there's three of them today. Is you got to determine what your values are. Make a decision to say, okay, if I'm going to be decisive, I'm going to determine three or four values in my life. And so values that you want to have in your life are things like this. I'm, number one, the number one value is I'm going to follow God. So decisions that you make are based off of that, right? I want to have a good marriage. So decisions you make are based off of that. I, I, I want to be a good uh, dad or mom to my kids. So decisions you base are based off of that, right? Uh, I, I want to be great at what I do at work. So decisions are based off of that. Do you understand what I'm saying? So my values will determine the decisions that I make. And this isn't like a self-help thing because the number one value is that you would love God and love people. Like that you would make that decision to say, this is the most important thing. Also that you would deepen your wisdom pool. Man, I, I think it's important that you and I are finding advice, finding counsel, finding wisdom from people that are 10, 15, or 20 steps ahead of us. And so we all have a bonehead friend that we can get advice from. And man, if you find yourself being indecisive about life in general, it's probably because you need to deepen your wisdom pool. You need to be able to have godly people in your life that you can lean into. And you can find those relationships at a place like Grace River Church. So if you're a part of Grace River, you can find those in small groups. You can find those in discipleship relationships. You can deepen your wisdom pool like that in a really applicable way. And if you're not a part of Grace River and you're just watching, I would encourage you to find a really good Bible church where you can build some solid relationships where you can deepen your wisdom pool. And then ultimately, you got to decide who is Lord. At the end of the day, you have to make a decision when it comes to being decisive is who is in charge. And really, it boils down to three different people that are in charge. Am I in charge? Is culture in charge? Or is God in charge? And our hope is that you would make a decision to say, man, it's Jesus who is Lord. You will be indecisive as long as you stay on the fence. Until you go all in and say, okay, I'm done running my life. I'm done being in charge. It's, it all belongs to God. Until you say, God, I'm holding nothing back from you, you are going to struggle with indecisiveness. And so what I want you to know today is you can be decisive. And what makes you decisive is deciding who is in charge of your life. So I'm going to pray for you right now. Would you just bow your heads and close your eyes? And let's, uh, let's pray 
And man, I know there's a next step for you to take. It, it may be one of these three next steps. It may be something completely different. But maybe today you're, you're listening and it's like, man, your values are all over the place. You, you're not sure what they really are. And man, my, my, my hope and the homework for you is that you would sit down and write out three or four values that you're just going to live by. And my, my hope is that one of those values, the number one value would be that you'd live for God. But maybe you're, you would also say, man, I, I've got some friends that are leading me astray. I've got some relationships that, that aren't helpful, that I know are dragging me down. And maybe the next step for you is that you would just decide, man, I'm going to deepen that wisdom pool. I'm going to find some people that are further along than me, and, and I'm going to submit to their leadership in my life. Like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to what they have to say and actually do it. Or maybe you're, you're watching today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. Would you decide that he is Lord today? In fact, if that's you right now, you could just simply pray a prayer like this. God, I know that I need you. I've been living my life way too long on my own. And so God, today I, I confess that, that I've let you down. God, I confess that I've sinned. But God, I also believe that you sent your only son to come and be the Lord of my life so that I wouldn't have to run things any longer. God, I know that he came to die in my place. And today I confess you and only you to be the Lord of my life. Help me to live all the days of my life, not for, for, for myself, but for you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray all this. Amen. Hey, I want to say thanks for watching online today. I hope that you're battle ready. If you just prayed that prayer, would you just text this number, yes to this number, 636-336-2475. That's 636-336-2475. Just the word yes uh, to that number. We just want to celebrate with you and just uh, give you some resources to help you take a next step as you meet, know, and follow Jesus. I want to say thanks again for watching online today. Hope that you have an awesome week, and I can't wait to see you in person at Grace River real soon. Thanks, and have an awesome day. I hope that you were encouraged by what you heard today. Here at Grace River, we believe that it's important to give back to the God who gave us everything. If you feel inclined to give, I'd like to give you that opportunity now. You can do so by texting Grace River to the number on the screen. Lastly, I'd like to personally invite you to one of our three in-person services every Sunday at 8.30, 9.45, and 11 a.m. That's it for today. We hope to see you soon.